Hemligen. What's up, what's up, people? Welcome to another episode of I Am Negan, a TWD Universe podcast. My name's Adam Vale. I'm an editor over at The Coalition. Tonight, tonight I am joined by Richard Bailey Jr., editor-in-chief from The Coalition, and Carlos Romero from Throwdown. What's up, guys? Yo, 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 what's going on? What's up, everybody? Oh, man, people, what's up? Is it this, this was a good episode. This was this is for season eleven, episode six, on the inside, and uh, I was uh, I was deeply surprised because for some reason the way it started off and what was going on and and we'll get into it, but the whole Virgil and Connie situation, I was like, ah, oh, this is gonna drag out. This I don't know why. I just had this weird feeling in my gut that once it got into a house I'm like oh this is going to be whack this is going to be one of those moments where this is going to be a bonding we're going to have to hear the whole backstory with Virgil because she doesn't really know anything about Virgil we do because of Michonne and all the stuff he went through and how are they going to communicate but no they turned it into a haunted house it was awesome you know so uh, overall though there was a lot going on in this episode a lot of back and forth and uh, so right off the bat people thanks again this has been great. We're definitely getting a lot of people that are following on Spotify and iTunes and, and all the other formats. And this is great. It, just Not just for us, but for Walking Dead. Because that means that people are still interested. Or maybe they're just tuning back in because this is the final season. At least for Walking Dead proper. I want to see what's going to go. What's going to happen? How, how's everything going to go down? So this is great. So thanks again, everyone, for your support. And... Uh, Yes, so now let's just continue with the format. That's the other positive thing. A lot of people seem to enjoy the format, which is if this is your first time, we discuss the episode, but we break down all the story arcs just from beginning to end. So instead of just flip-flopping and then this happened and then this happened and we flip to Carol, no, no, no. We just go through this whole story arc of what was taking place per those characters and that's it. So then that way there's no flip-flopping and we're all on the same page and we know what's going on. So in this one, we have three, three that are going on. So we have Daryl and Leah and a Carver situation, right? We then have the Virgil and Connie and then we have Aaron, Carol, uh, Kelly, and we can throw in Rosita. She doesn't do much, but she was part of that group, right? So we will start off with the smaller one and work our way up to the meaty one. And then the, the shorter one is pretty much the Aaron and Carol situation right there. All right, so we'll just dive into this right now. All right, so this, the, I, I got to say, out of the episode, though, the whole episode, this part felt like a little bit... Felt like fluff for me because I, when we from when we saw closing out from the last episode where uh, Carol was all gone, oh, she was like, Come on, we're gonna go and do this now, we're gonna go save Connie, and now it's like, Oh, we'll wait till morning and we'll go out and we'll do that whole thing. Well, it's morning and they're, they're getting ready, and Kelly's already gone, she grabbed a horse and she, she took off. So, right there, I was like, Well, why are you dividing this up? We, yes, we get it. We get that Kelly and the connection and, and the Connie and all of that. But uh, and it, I, I felt like something bad was going to happen Con- to Kelly. That that's what they were setting up. Something was going to happen. Because it's too soon for something to happen negative toward Connie. Because we're bringing her back into the fold. So I was like, oh, this is what's going to happen. Something, something's going to fall apart. Or there's going to be some tragedy going on with Kelly. Did, did anybody else get that vibe? You know, Rich, did you get any vibes from that? Or it was just me? Yeah, no, I think they that definitely was intentional. That they wanted you to think, uh, well, something could happen to anybody at any given moment in time. Uh, but yeah, because I know that she was very eager for the minute that they found out that Connie was still around. She was very eager to get back out there and, you know, do whatever she needed to do to start the search. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I did feel something could happen, but uh, that was intentional. I think they wanted you to feel like something could happen to her. Yeah, um, and this is—I never. Oh, you never felt that. I, I, yeah, I never felt that. Um, I always knew that they were gonna uh, Connie and Kelly were gonna see each other again. I just always felt that that was gonna be inevitable. Um, so yeah, when she left off, I I'm like, yeah, she's just gonna get ahead, and uh, I didn't know that she was gonna catch up with the other members uh, before that. But uh, but yeah, they. 
I knew they were going to see eye to eye, so I, I never expected anything bad to happen. The issue, and this has been my issue, it's like a broken record. I feel like I bring this up in every episode. Somebody needs to break out a damn map. Because not only does <laughs> Kelly know the direction, because we, we only knew somewhat of a location, but she knows exactly the path. Because then, what does she do? She's on this road, and then she finds a little campground. And then mm -hmm. when she searches, she finds a notebook, and she sees that this is a notebook from a little notepad that uh, Connie was using, and it looks like she was going back and forth having a conversation with someone talking about, oh, we're being followed, and the whole thing. And this is my gripe. She was still traveling within daylight, so she wasn't that far off. And we've known from the last episode that this tunnel was not that far off from Alexandria, because that's what um they had discussed. So why why like if if i could see a map when connie gets out of the tunnel right i guess we have to close our eyes use our imagination so let's say if we're going from like north and south like she comes out of the tunnel virgil is there we know that virgil went back to went to alexandria because michonne told him to go there remember and when he got mm -hmm. there there was nobody there because they were too busy doing the whisper battle so he was like oh everything fell apart here well time to keep going and he comes across connie so why at that point not say or try to communicate something like where are you from and then she could have pointed back over there or not they're close my point is that they're close to alexandra maybe they could have exp she could have kind of explained some of the situations that, oh listen we're having a war but that is our base let's go back but no they they wander off to who knows where and, and well, you, you're missing you're missing something that's very pivotal to pivotal, pivotal to all of this, and that's the fact that when when they encountered the 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 ex whisperer back in uh yeah. back in uh, hilltop, uh, there was one person, uh, there was one person that knew the location that they were talking about. Yeah, which that, was Lydia. Yeah, and who wasn't part of this group? Yeah, Lydia. Oh, yeah. yeah, Lydia. And, and, <laughs> but that's the other thing, too. It's like, so I guess she told them, and we have to assume that she told Kelly. We have to assume. Yeah, that's all we have. That's all we have. Because yeah. cause Kelly Kelly dipped, in the, I guess, before the sun came out. So, you know, so we have to assume that between the, the time that they were riding back to Alexandria and when they went to sleep that they told her, but... It's, I just find it interesting that Lydia wasn't part of this. She was part of the Hilltop stuff, and she was the one. She was, I guess, she was the brains of, of the location. So I just expected to see her. Something when yeah, I, I didn't see her, I'm like, oh, but that's oh. that was my issue. It's like, well, whip out a map. Somebody whip out a map to say, all right, this is what she said to go. She's busy. She's got some chores to do. She can't go on this trip with us. You know, something because she knows about it. Remember, she said it. it was like, oh, I know exactly where that. That's not too far from Alexandria. So not only do we not see her in this episode, but she we never see that interaction of her giving directions to Kelly. So right. yeah, you know, where where are you going, Kelly? What's going on? So anyway, uh, continuing with her whole uh, aspect of this show, she we see that I, I, I'm assuming that the horse got tired, right? Because she's trying to pull the horse. It doesn't look injured, but it, he's just not moving. The horse isn't moving. She's pulling. She's pulling. Eventually, she slips. She falls on a puddle of mud. And then at this point, that's when when Aaron and uh, Rosita and Carol show up. And I was like, "Oh, it looks like you need some help." Adam, I got I got to ask something though. And Go. Rich, you, you're you're the you're the tiebreaker here. I don't remember Aaron being here. Was Aaron in this group? He he left with them. Yeah, well, he was last week. He was there. When they came across the guy who mentioned that Connie was still around. And then the right. beginning of this episode, he was also with her. Remember when Carol was talking with her, we were getting ready. And then they were like, where's yeah. Kelly? And she was already yeah. gone. Yeah, but he but he definitely was not there in the, later in the episode when the group was, when the group actually, when they had the, the reunion. It was, was, it was, it was just, it was just Carol. It was uh, Rosita. And mm -hmm. it was uh, uh, Kelly's girlfriend. What, what's oh, her yeah, name? the girl from the wall. Yep. And that was yeah, was standing guard. Look at that. You it, see? it was it was in for it. Yeah, you see how yeah. they did this. You see how they they plant little pieces here and there, and then they just cut them out. Like, all right, we'll film this scene. Oh, we didn't film him. Oh, he went home already. All right, all right. Uh, we'll just whatever. We'll, we'll 
you know, we we sn- we snuck him in. Everybody will just assume he was there because that's what I did. I just assumed he he went on the trip with them as well. No, I would have noticed that hand because he even said it. he remember he was like, <laughs> "We're going to go in daylight. We can't go now," so implying that he was going to be part of that rescue mission. Right. So. No, he was he, he wasn't with them. Yeah. It was it was just it was five people and um, yeah, the Aaron definitely wasn't part of that group. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's it. We'll get to them from the very end because that links to the third the story arc with uh, Virgil and Connie. But that was it for this one. This is a small one. So then now we get into the part with Daryl and Leah and Carver and Pope. And Frost, that's his name. Frost is the dude that is part of Maggie's crew that is getting tortured. The one that's been getting the, the whoopings. So we start off, we're back at that camp, the the the, the, the Reaper's camp. And yep. uh, we got Frost in each other and Carver is torturing him. He's doing all his techniques trying to get more info. And Pope looks over, and, and this is key to mention, because Pope looks over at Daryl and like, how do you feel about this with the torture? He's like, I've done worse. You know, it's like, and he has. He's done things. He's done a lot of things. Never to a friend, because like, I, I wouldn't even say if they're buddies, but they're definitely on the same side, right? But And remember, we know from the episode, two episodes back, where he was telling him, it's like, in, in sort of code, that like, listen, these people listening, we, we can't act like we know each other, we gotta just go with it. And he did. Frost, because he went up, he got tortured, and then they brought him back down and still had no info. And that's when Leo was trying to, you know, convince or work her magic, what she thinks work her magic, to win over uh, Daryl's trust, that whole thing. So, so, we, so just real quick question is Frost. I don't remember. Frost was part of Maggie's crew, right? That came from that unknown place. Yeah, she would... that's what I'm saying because the, I don't re- recall him ever being part of Alexandria. If, it were, if we're wrong people, go ahead, put it in the comments. But I'm pretty sure he was part of Maggie's. He was part of the that other new group because I don't recall ever seeing him or hearing them talk about anything. It, can I just make a comment and Yo. say... There are way too many side characters in oh, this yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not even that. It's that there's so many side characters that are still lingering. Because usually when they would introduce, early on in the, 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 the series, they would introduce a side character, and like two episodes in, that character was dead. You know, it's like, oh, okay, that's why you did this. You know, just to plant the seed. And it's like, oh, look. And then he gets a lot of talking parts, and then all of a sudden, oh, he's gone. You yep. know? So, but uh, yeah. So here's this one getting tortured. So... At this point, you see Daryl's like, well, let me let me see if I can get some info out of him. And so he goes over to him and he starts punching him and doing the whole thing, torturing. And the guy's playing along still. And I have to say playing along because at, at no point did he spill the beans like, stop doing this, help me. You know, he never said it. He just stuck with it. And he was like, I'm not saying anything. I'm not telling and at the same time, we got Daryl trying to give code in a way. It's like, listen, just this is to help you out, you know. Uh, and he's still being very vocal. It's not whispering or anything. He's just saying, hey, how about this? All right, just tell us the neighborhood, tell us the location, that type of thing. Because then, if he can at least get that, just give something for for Pope and because he has a feeling that they're going to kill him if he doesn't. And he's trying to keep this guy, this guy alive, and also himself, because I'm sure in the back of his mind he doesn't know if Frost is just gonna give him. Like, I'll oh, forget the Pope. He's also in on it. He's Maggie's best friend. Oh, you know what I mean? He just spew everything out. But um, he says no. He's not saying anything. He's not gonna talk. And uh, this was kind of brutal, you know, because Daryl takes out his his knife and he cuts a finger off. Cuts one of this dude's finger and. It's like, you got to tell us, or I'll just take another one. And then that's when he starts crying, the whole thing. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the area. I'll tell you what's going on. All right, so there goes that. So then now we're in the neighborhood, right? And we can clearly see from the top view, this is this is the correct area. This is the area where the, the hideout is, where Maggie and, and Negan and Father Gabriel and the other dude where they're, they're hiding out because they're waiting, right, for everybody else to show up. Well, Daryl and them, see what happens. So as they're there, I noticed that they were making a lot of noise, especially with Daryl. And I was like, oh, he's smart. He's trying to let whoever else is there know what's going on here. You know, And right there, well, before I even skip ahead, from that torture scene, I, I mean, it's safe to say, I don't think anybody thinks that, that he, 
at any point here that Daryl is really taking sides with Pope or anything, right? He, he is trying to look out for Maggie and Egan, right? Everybody knows that. Yeah, there's, I mean, he can't blow his cover. And yeah, that's and... what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I, I just want to brush off because I I just don't see it. Any, there's nothing here that tells me that he's been convinced, even with that, that one-on-one a few episodes back that he had with Pope and Pope Kelly, the sad story about the chosen one and all that stuff. I don't think that's convincing any of the viewers that, oh, wow, did they flip Daryl? <laughs> no. 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 No, hell no. We've, we've spent 10 other seasons with Daryl. We know who he is. Now, if this was early on, remember early days with Daryl and his brother, and he did, oh this, yeah, he did some flip flopping, and it was all about him and his brother. He didn't care who he uh, he backed it, but no, not at this point. So yeah, that's why I just brushed over. So anyway, so now they're back in the town. So they go into the first house. They're looking around. They don't find anything. They're like, all right, there's nobody here. This is, this is not it. And. Uh, then they're like, all right, let's go to another house. And when they get to the other house, we all recognize that house because that was a safe house. That's mm-hmm. the house. That's the house that had everything. <laughs> and then that's when they're like, oh, we find some, was there some wet items here? It's like, oh, this is still wet. This is fresh that we're here. And again, this is where Daryl, trying to look out for his people, making noises. And then they start talking about, it's like, well, it's like, well, I don't see anybody here. I mean, what, we got like 20 people. We got guns and stuff. Maybe they just heard all that and saw and took off. And it's, it's, it's great that he said that and gave those cues because the crew are underneath the floorboards, right? They were underneath the, the mm-hmm. main room there. So yeah, they were hearing this. And uh, so he's doing that whole thing. But at the same time, we got this issue with Carver. So Carver is... It, it's clear that Carver is trying to be the the second in command because it's leah really that's the second in command with pope but carver definitely wants to earn that trust he wants to be there and he's really pissed off especially now that daryl's involved because he was pissed off when pope told him step aside and let daryl do the torturing and then now that he's on the road and he's he feels that oh that daryl's playing too much of a commanding role trying to say oh let's leave this room oh let's leave this house i was like oh wait, you're so quick to just bounce around oh, whose side are you really on and he don't he doesn't trust them and you know what i get it i mean even if let's say we were part of that group and we're whatever we're not on either side we're not trying to figure it out if a new person comes into the fold and we don't know much about them yeah question everything so i get it uh, it's only Pope that is really trusting Daryl because of what he saw him do with Leah, getting her out of the the burning uh, cabin. And and we found out in this uh, right after that she didn't know. Oh yeah, that was the key right here during that whole little back and forth uh, argument between Daryl and, and Carver. She didn't because he mm-hmm. was like, "Oh, I'm just looking out for you," and this and this and that. You're 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 falling for this guy's BS, whatever it was. And she was like, "Yeah, well, like you looked out for me back at the house. You knew that he was going to set that that cabin on fire with me inside." Right. And he didn't really say much. You know, I was like, "Well, you know, well, uh, what what could he say?" Because he was just falling in line. But then the best part is uh, Daryl's line because he was like, "Oh, this is where I can jump in on this." He was like, "You know, you're right. You're right. I don't care about you." Or, or anybody else. In fact, I don't care about her. I'm here for her. Whatever she needs, I'm here for her. And the whole thing. So just trying to strengthen that Lord, because he sees that they're they're button heads at this point. So if he wants to try to build up those points, those little relationship points with uh, Leah, this is the time to do it. Yeah, you know. And uh, that's it. So they 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 get into that little altercation, and then at that one point before they go to leave, that's when Carver's like, "Wait, there's one more spot to check." Because he sees uh, some stains or something to that effect on the ground. And that's for the floorboard. And he opens up and there's nothing there. So, And then uh, we get a quick little glimpse that we see the crew just running off into the woods. So they escape. So it was great. All the noise of Daryl making and doing all that stuff was great. Because it it definitely helped them. Because if not, they probably wouldn't have been prepared. And (laughs) when those dudes would have just opened up the the door, guns blazing, they would have seen them there. And then just, you know. Sent them on their merry way to the heavens. So, uh, so then uh, to continue on with their part, now they get back to the camp. Now it's nightfall; it's dark, and once they get to the camp, we see that uh, our boy Frost, who's now tied up to a pole of some sort, and he's a walker. He has died, 
and the hope is there. And they're like, what happened? And he's like, oh, uh, I, well, you guys were gone. I was able to get some more info out of him. You know, a lot more info. And he gives a glance at Daryl. But he also gives a glance at, at Leah as well. And then... Uh, yeah, and then at this point, that's when he was like, uh, come on, Carver. And then he starts walking off, and they're, like, laughing or whatever. And then they just... That's it. They just walk off, and you just see... Uh, Daryl and Leah just looking at each other like, all right, well, what's what's going on here? Now, I we get it. I get what they're trying to say and plant that seed of maybe he spilled the beans and said, hey, listen, Daryl is part of our group and blah, 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 blah. I don't think at that point he would have done it. This guy, I mean, the guy he took the finger chop. He, he kept it all on. Why spill it when you know you're going to die? There's no point. You're, you're just sending, right. giving him a death sentence, Daryl. And Maggie and all of them, so I think he he took that to the grave, and I don't think that's, I don't think it's it's anything. Because if that was the case, I don't think they would have just walked away. They would have just taken him out right there. But like, all right, just grab him. He's a traitor, and let's move on. Well, it's so it makes well, me wonder what, what kind of information that he did actually give them. Because I I'm pretty sure he gave them something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. I, I think I think we can all agree that Frost was a dead man as right as soon as Daryl left because oh, yeah. he looked like he was going to do some more damage to this guy. So this guy was a dead dead man regardless. Agreed. Yeah, yeah he's. <laughs> I'm like, damn. I'm like, yeah. Probably next time we probably see him, he's probably going to be dead. Mm -hmm. and yep. <laughs> yeah. it, it really it really sucks that we don't know more about this guy. Because I, I, it would have been great if this was a character that uh, the audience was more connected with. Because then it would, it would feel something. It's like the whole thing with Andrea. When Andrea was tied to the chair and with the governor. And then there was a walker in the room. And it was that urgency. It was like someone has to save her. Someone has to get there. Someone has to do it. And then we see that she turned. And I think that the big or, surprise there is... Well, or even someone like, you know, for example, like Abraham. You know, yeah, it's like... Yeah. Yeah. If 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 that even he doesn't have to be that big of a character, but him or um, what's the what's the name of that dude? I already forgot, man, because he died way too soon. The brolic dude, the black dude. Therese was it Therese? Oh, I no, know I don't think no, it, was. it wasn't Therese. Yeah, I know you're talking about that. Yeah, that was one of the ones I was saying that they they brought him in, and he was just yeah, he was a big dude, and he was with them, and a fan favorite. Everyone liked him, and then they killed him off. And then they killed him off, like yeah. we, like those 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 deaths, and his sister as well. Like all of those mm -hmm. deaths yeah. were significant, and we felt that. But like they could have, you could, they could have done someone with you know instead of Frost, because Frost was essentially just a red shirt at this point. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. there was you know, no. We expected him to die. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. You're right. Yeah, Man, they definitely should have had somebody else. But I guess it's all about time. They didn't have the time to build that connection with the character for us to build that connection. I should say. So uh, it then, was Tyrese. It was Tyrese, right? See, yep. There we go. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, he was a great character. I, I remember. I was pissed. I was really pissed when that one when he died. That. Yeah, that shit was sad. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. R. I. P. All right. So then, uh, the next step, the next part, and this is uh, the meat and potato. This was it. This was the big one, and this is that we see Connie and Virgil. And they're running in the woods, and they're fighting some walkers, and they're being chased by something. And really being chased by something. It's like there's someone running after them. Because at first, Shit. I'm like, I, when I when I first saw it, it was a lot of fast cuts. And I'm like, why are they running? I mean, the walkers aren't really fast. So unless it's a humans, but then you see the movement. Something didn't seem right. It looked, it looked, it looked kind of crazy. And then when they get closer to a house, and we see there's a bunch of walkers outside. And they're just pushing them aside. You know, so it's like, all right, whoever's chasing them is definitely not one of these walkers. These these two are not paranoid about walkers. They they already know how to deal with them. And uh, it's a big house, and Connie's trying to bash open the door while Virgil is fighting off some of the walkers that are just attracted by the noise and just the movement. So they get in, and once they get in, she closes the door. There's a little altercation with one of the ones trying to get in, and they close it and they lock it up. Now the first thing I notice for all whenever I see any of these type of setups is that if i go see them any of these characters enter a house or a structure and there's already boards up on the windows i'm assuming someone's there already this was a hideout because we didn't see that with that yellow house the safe house safe house looked like a regular house but this 
this looked like somebody was was bunkered in, right? It, it all the windows were boarded up. You know, I don't know if anybody else picked that up, but that's the first thing I thought. I was like, all right, somebody's here. That's I I don't I didn't know if it was going to be what we eventually find out is it was those feral cannibal humans that are running around. But um, yeah, so they get into this house, and uh, the first thing that uh, Virgil says is like, hey, listen, you rest, take it easy, you haven't slept, and I'm going to go and search the house. So he searches the house, he says everything is clear, it's fine. She goes up to the bathroom, she opens up the medicine cabinet, she's looking at, first she's looking at some of the pictures, she's seeing a lot of the eyes has been uh, scratched out of the images. So that, along with everything being boarded up, tells me that this house is occupied. I don't know if it's by the, the maniacs that were chasing them or whatever, but maybe there's other people here, survivors. But even though Virgil was like, yeah, there's no one else here. I don't know. It just doesn't seem right because we've seen too many times before where a similar situation, everything's boarded up and it looks like it's clear. And at least you find some walkers. You're like, all oh, the people that were here now have converted. Something happened. But they didn't find any bodies there. So, uh, at least not yet. So, uh, she opens up the medicine cabinet. She uh, finds some pills and she's looking through. And then you could see, like, through the cracks of the medicine cabinet, like the back wall. And then you see some eyes pop up. <laughs> she freaks. I love the reaction that they show on her end. She's like, oh, and she slams it, goes running out. She yeah. lost it, yeah. She lost it. That was awesome. She did an amazing job. She did an amazing job showing the fear on her face. She could definitely do any other horror movie, and I just buy into it because she she definitely sold all of these scenes. Now, so she goes and she tells uh, Virgil. Virgil was like, oh, "All right, all right," you know. He's looking around, and then he he uses the same thing. He opens up the door, doesn't see anything, and he's just saying, "Hey, listen, you need sleep. You're tired. You're, you're seeing things." So, and you know what? For a second, probably a second, I thought that too. I was like, you know, maybe she's just delusional. Maybe she's just seeing things. And that's what's going to be this whole segment here. She's going to hear things. She's going to see, well, not hear things, but you know, she's going to see things or even vibrations. Cause that's the thing. They had played that off early on when they first introduced her about being deaf, but she could still feel vibrations if things are coming and this and this and that. They didn't do that in this, which uh, I was surprised. They didn't do that, but uh, oh yeah, yeah they did. When, 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 when the the thing after that, when like she's not even looking at the at the at the direction of the of the dude that's running after her, like she's just looking the other way and she felt the presence and then she just took oh, off. Okay, well they didn't without even seeing him because I don't know, I'll bring up once we get closer to it why I I felt that they didn't bring it up. But, um, so uh, she's talking to Virgil about, about the whole thing. She said, I know Pat, no, no, was here. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you probably saw something, but it's not here. I'll do another walkover. We'll, we'll look through. And she's really frustrated. She's upset by the whole thing. He's not taking it serious. And he's like, oh, no, 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 I get it. Get. So she walks out and she's taking the lead walking. And as he's trying to walk, the door slams behind and he screams, which I find it ironic that he was screaming. But this is why I say, because the slam should have made some kind of vibration because it's an old wood house. You know, the floorboards, if he would have stomped on the floorboards, she would have felt that. Those type of things. You know, I don't know. I, I That's... Because remember, she she kept walking down, didn't notice anything different until, like you said, I think was, there was a few times that that happened, but then it, one of the, the feral come and attack her. Is that the part where you're talking about, that she felt it? A presence? Yep. All right, yeah. Yep. And then she gets attacked. She gets the whole little fight thing. She goes running off. There's a lot of that back and forth. How big is this house? I don't know. It didn't look this big mm. that it could have these type of uh, gaps within the walls. you know. But it was definitely massive. So she's traveling around this house, trying to escape this thing. They're doing a great job of giving from her perspective that I really liked where everything's just silent. And right. it, it just, I mean, it's dark, it's silent. She's paranoid. I, I, I could feel it. I, I was feeling it. I was like, oh man, this is, this is horrible because you can't tell. What if it's, it's crawling up and sneaking on her? Now, it, it, these creatures don't know that she's deaf. So I don't think they, they probably keep screaming because that was what they were doing before. They were just screaming out loud and attacking them. 
so uh, as they she's navigating through the house, she finds one room, and maybe I was just seeing something different, but it looks like there was a bunch of bones on the floor in that room. Yeah, there were right? bones. That, yeah. that was a feeding room. Okay, because she was looking around. It was already same thing with the silence, but uh, yeah, it looked like it was a bunch of bones. So I, this was their house, and then she uh, meets up with uh, Virgil. He finds his way to where she is. I don't know how he got it. Well, maybe he just opened up the door. Who knows? But she finds a way. And then he starts filling in the blanks. He was like, I think they set us up. You know, I think that they were chasing us and leading us to this house. This is their house. This is how they know how to navigate around the areas and the whole thing. So she, he starts giving the whole speech about, you know what? When we get out of here, or you get out of here. Just leave. Leave me. And she's like, I'm not leaving you. You know, it's like, no, 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 you got to do that. You got to leave me. It's not going to happen. And they get into the whole back and forth thing. And uh, I felt like that was a little filler because like, there's no way. There's no way she's going to leave you. Now, for the viewers, I guess we could say when it comes to the characters, and we had just talked about how there's so many characters and side characters, he would qualify as a side character because of what he had those few episodes with Michonne. And that part's done. So do we still need him? No. I guess not. If this was, well, I wonder if he's gonna if he's gonna see uh, Michonne again. Well, that'd be another thing. Yeah, and, and even that. I mean, that wasn't. It's not gonna be like, oh, let's start hugging. You know, one of those reunions because it started off horrible with him just luring her over there and then locking her up. You know, eventually he changed his ways and stuff, but still, and he was really. But they, I mean, they've they've done it. They kind of done it in the past, like uh, Rick. When he saw uh, what's what's uh, homeboy's name from Fear, um, uh, Morgan. Morgan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like he, like he, like he saw him the last time he saw him before he joined up. He was he lost his mind. Yeah, yeah. So and and then he got back to see each other. Maybe yeah. kind of similar like this. Mm -hmm. That's true. But I, I'm just saying at this point, I was like, oh, he's gonna die. <laughs> he's gonna do whatever he can. To keep her alive because he feels bad and he even said he was like the whole thing with Michonne and all that stuff and uh, this is it this is what he's here to do to help her get out of this you know uh then uh was it there was still there was another scene he gets attacked and she goes running off and there or maybe I just jumped the gun but there because there was a lot back and forth with this but the, the main part of all this is that while she was running around she's in the wall he's getting attacked she saw him getting getting attacked he, he looks like he kills it he doesn't kill it he stabs it it goes running off she's banging on through the wall he sort of sees the same type of thing just the eyes trying to see what's going on not too sure She's still being attacked from the other side of the wall. She's trying to get through. He eventually realizes it's her. He pulls her through the wall, gets her out. And yeah, and I think that's when, all right, so that's why I had in my notes. And then that's when they had the whole, he, he, she gives a, a discussion he, about, uh, listen, I've got to get you out of here. Whole thing. So then at this point, then we got the, the, the female uh, feral woman that go, jumps on him, starts stabbing him up. It's getting brutal now. Now I'm like, oh yeah, he's definitely going to die. This is it. But then Connie helps out. And now that they're, they're being surrounded, there was another body. Now, Rich, you brought this up. You, because I was curious. I wasn't sure at this point where she was rubbing the guts, where she was getting the guts from on the floor. I don't remember a walker entering this room. But at some point, you said that there was some walker guts. And she poured, that's what she was putting on herself. Because at first I thought, oh, when I first time, I watched it twice, that part, and I still couldn't figure out. I thought, oh, she's just using the blood from Virgil. Because well, he was when, when, uh, when they first get into the, into the house, they, they go in with a walker. Yeah. And that's the one. So they, that's and then the they one? kill that walker. They kill that walker as soon as they go in the door. So it's still there. Oh, so it uh -huh. is still there. Oh, okay. So I guess, I guess it's the, the whole roundabout running and all that stuff. I just assumed it, they were in another part. So that was the same door. Again, damn. I just, it, it just threw me for a loop because I thought that was like a back door. So the, you're saying we, they were, we did a full circle. We're back at the front of the house. Well, yeah, because... When yeah, yeah, because when they opened the door, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, all yeah, the yeah. walker was coming after him. That's what. That's mm -hmm. how they get in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she thought she she uh, she thought that she put the guts on herself. She opens up the door and then she just leans to the side and she just lets them do their thing and they go running in and of course uh, even though the 
those dudes are feral. They're still human. They're still warm. And they're food. So there's that whole thing going on. And she was quick with picking up uh, Virgil and bringing him out. So she brings him out. And I guess there were no walkers outside at this point. Or at least none that were going to attack him. Because we did see some walkers. And then that's when uh, Kelly shows up. And we see that the mm-hmm. rest of the crew. Now, I don't want to assume Aaron was there because I was wrong before with that. So, did you see Aaron? Did he pop up in this scene? Because we know Carol shows up with uh, Rosina. No. No, right. It so, was it was only is, is only women uh, from the Alexandria group that yeah, were in there. That's it. And she's, they, they get this moment where they're both staring each other down. And then Kelly's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I guess she's taking blame. For everything that's happened, I don't know why. It's not her fault. It was Carol's fault with the whole explosion in the cave. So I don't, I don't understand this. But whatever. Then they embrace. They get a nice hug, and that's it. That's where it ends for their segment. You know. So overall, and let's not let's not forget that that Connie, <laughs> Connie went to embrace uh, Kelly. <laughs> Meanwhile. Homeboy Virgil, you're a fucking lying in the ground all stabbed. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's stabbed. I was but just was wondering. A, well, that's the thing. She doesn't. That's the thing. Kelly doesn't give a shit. They, they don't know him. So they don't know. He could have been the one. Uh, I don't know. They, there's a bunch of things. They don't know. But the, I wasn't sure if they were going to hug because she is covered in guts. I was like, is she going to do it? Does even Kelly know that, that maybe that could be her blood? Maybe that's Connie's blood. We don't know. Maybe Connie's all bit up from within the house. But it doesn't matter. They they miss each other. Kelly felt sorry. They mm-hmm. embrace. And that was it. But that scene, that whole scene, was great. The back and forth with all what was going on in that house. Getting from her perspective where it was silent. And then jumping back to hear all the screaming. Because there was some moments where she's just wandering around. And she's just, you know, doesn't really... She's using her vision. So she's looking at She doesn't hear, see anything. But when they turn on the audio, we hear our boy Virgil fighting with one of them screaming. Ah, ah, and banging into everything. <laughs> it's like... It's like oh, I was like, shit, this is fucking crazy. You know, but it was awesome. It was awesome. I really liked that uh, that whole segment there. And I'm surprised. I'm really surprised that Virgil survived. I'm really surprised. So the fact that he survived tells me he is going to survive at least toward the end of this. He's going to play a major part. But who knows? Maybe he doesn't survive. He did take some brutal stabs. It's, it, yo, man, let, let's 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 just settle it here. It, it sounds more like you don't want him to survive. I don't want him to survive. <laughs> yeah. It's like I thought. I thought he wasn't gonna survive. Thought he was gonna be dead. There's no hugging moment, but he survived. But I don't think he's gonna survive after this. Right, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because this is it. This is the last season. This is when you start dropping people. Okay. This is when people start dying. You don't start bringing characters and keeping everyone alive or introducing new characters and keeping them alive. Hell, look, Frost is gone. Who's Frost? I you know, Frost. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You know, so when we see these lingering characters, with, like with this whole situation, it's like he served his purpose is what I was getting at. He served his purpose. He found Connie. He brings her to this. They, they find a shelter. It turns out that this is a feeding ground. So his main goal, though, is to keep her alive. He's done a lot of other mm-hmm. horrible things. But you know what? He's going to serve his purpose. He's going to use himself as bait. That's what I thought was going to happen. And that she was going to escape. But she refused to leave him. She refused to leave him. And, uh, yeah, I, when I right at the end, when they were getting surrounded by the, the ferals, I was like, okay, this is where the door is going to kick in. And it's going to be Kelly and, and, and all of them. I At no point did I think both of them were going to die. But she thought smart and she thought quick. And I, like I said, I blanked out. I completely forgot about that walker that was on the ground. And then that's where she got the guts from. And yeah, she opening up the door. And then that, there you go. That's how that uh, played out. So it was good. I liked that. I liked the, everything else was going on with the Daryl situation with the T's. I don't think that's going to uh, generate anything from there. I don't think it's going to be like, oh, see, he's a traitor. That's, that's too on the nose. That's two on the nose. I don't. I think it's going to be that whole suspense of does Pope know? Does he not know? And that might play out for a few episodes. But who knows? From the trailer that we've seen for the next episode, we not we may not return here. It looks like we're going to be back at the the Commonwealth. 
So what did you guys? I didn't see the preview. That was the, oh, you didn't it see was that? Uh, Commonwealth stuff. Yeah, it showed uh, some stuff going on at the Commonwealth with uh, Ezekiel running and, and some other things going on there. So, what yeah, did... I think um, I really enjoyed this episode. I think uh, it was one of the most one of the more unique. Uh, episodes the way it was shot it was shot like a, at least the, the parts with connie and virgil they were shot like a horror movie mm-hmm. like they're really well done i really i really like this episode um sometimes you know you know these shows can get very formulaic at times um and you know i i appreciate when we have you know these kind of one-offs you know it's like oh let's do let's do our even though this is kind of t- kind of a horror show in a way it's more of a drama but yeah. It has some horror aspects. This, this a lot. Most of this episode was essentially just a horror episode. Yeah, I think they had your relative in there. Was it George Romero? I think they they said they brought him in yeah. well, <laughs> mm-hmm. to help out. Yeah. Wait, what? He's he's not alive. Not him. Not him. There was somebody else. My bad. But there was someone else. They brought in. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> I miss an R.I.P. I miss George Romero. Oh. But they did bring up uh, someone else to assist with uh, the creation of the haunted house and the ferals and stuff like that, just to to give a different feel because they didn't want these ferals to just look like normal weirdo humans. They wanted to make it seem like they've been so far gone out in the wilderness that they just lost all connection to just what it is to be a normal human. And so they even at one point, if you remember, one of them that was on top of uh, Virgil was like calling him food. He just kept saying food. Yeah. Or you know, so it, it's just nuts. Like they just, they've, they've lost it. And it reminds me of if you've ever read uh, World War Z, not the, the movie with Brad Pitt, but in the book, there That's was Brad Pitt. There was uh, one part of the, in the, one of the, the town areas that they were in and they did uh, encounter some people that were feral and they somebody else that knew about them said it. it's like yeah these people have been so remote for so long that they've lost their connection and these people are nuts so it's one of those you know so so yeah so they, yeah overall it was good I liked it I liked it uh, they, they were building in different directions we'll see where it goes uh, I'm curious to see what's going to happen with Daryl when he finds out that uh, Connie is alive, especially now that Leah is around in the picture again. And as much as people kept wanting the Daryl and Carol relationship, I think that's pretty much dead in the water. Don't ever think that's ever going to happen. So right now it's definitely between Connie and Leah. I think the Leah situation is also dead. I don't really think he gives two shits about her. I think he sees her as the enemy. He's playing along like, oh, I care about you and this and this and that. But I think as soon as he finds Maggie and all of them and he knows they're safe, he's going to flip on her. He does not trust her. You know, cause, and I did, that's just my view. I don't think he's going to try to save her and bring her into the fold. I don't think. Oh, Leah? Yeah, I don't think. Um, I don't oh, think. I, I, I don't think you should be too sure of that. I mean, obviously it can go either way, but um, I think they're they're trying to built in the seeds to Leah sort of essentially just deciding to move on from the the Reapers because they did the whole thing where um, they killed the homeboy you know they stuffed his face into the into the into the yeah, fire yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they said they, they put her into the into the burning building um, I think I think there's they're planting some seeds that uh, could you know could grow and Leah would be part of the group and and I mean well, I'm thinking now I'm thinking now that it's like it's pretty interesting to see who is is this the end game here? I I'm just curious is it, are the Reapers the end game or are you know is it the Commonwealth? It's definitely um, the Commonwealth because there's just more going on there and there's more people strength in numbers. If you want anything major to happen, there's just not many. Like one minute we heard there was like fifteen. And then now it's like, what, 20 or whatever he was saying, Daryl, with the whole Reaper situation. But my thing is, is that we know that she was with them when they raided Maggie and all of them. And they killed women and children and, and of course, the men. But they, she was right. part of that group, that raid. And he knows this. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, that's another reason why I don't think he sees her the same. He's like, he never really knew her then. And these are her friends. And she's all cool with it. This is it. She was like, this is what we have to do. Remember, she even said it. And this, she's like, you're either with us or you're against us type of thing. 
because she was even yeah. questioning a little bit when Carver was doubting him. Yeah, I think I just think that uh, she's she's she she has a, a large potential to turn against the Reapers. Although I'm not I'm not saying that I'm guaranteeing it. I think she, it's it's very plausible that she'll she'll go team Alexandria. On I, I don't know. Um, you mentioned that she was part of the you know the the sacking of the old uh, settlement where where Maggie was in. I'm not sure. Did, did they mention that that she, she was part of it? She says she was with them for a bunch of those raids because that's how she became the second in command. When they uh-huh. were talking about how she has that that hierarchy structure and how she's the one that gives the orders underneath, you know, Pope Carver was all pissed off about it. So it's got to be something like that. I, I don't think they. Yeah, I there we go. There we go. Yeah, gotta one have something. Hour in, yeah, that's gotta, have something. gotta have something. It's gotta have something. <laughs> I don't know. In my mind, this is all right. So we'll just plan to see. This is my theory on this. My theory is that. She eventually will try to help Daryl out in some way because I think uh, Carver is going to try to kill Daryl. Whether he knows something's up or not, I don't think he likes him. Does And who knows, maybe Pope doesn't really trust him. <clears throat> we don't know. But I think definitely Carver is going to play a major part. Maybe Lee is going to try to help. She's going to get in the way. She is going to die. I don't see her making it out of this situation. There's going to be no happy ending with them. Where is Dog? I have not seen the dog. Oh, that's right. So I missed I, dog. Yeah, I thought maybe they would bring dog on this journey, and that dog was going to help, or or maybe even hinder the, the situation. Because I don't know if he's friendly with Maggie and them. It's like, oh, they're right here underneath the floorboard. I don't know. <laughs> you know, but uh, we didn't see dog. Uh, but yeah, no, the Connie's in the picture, and they were already teasing that the, between that connection between Daryl and Connie. And remember, he was really searching for her, and he, he became an, a good guy anyway. So some people were like, "Ah, oh, you're looking too much into it." But it's it's at this point. I know that Daryl, the actor Norman Reedus, even said he was like that. There should never really be a love interest for him. He was like, that, "That's not his role here," and. People just naturally want to fill in the blank, right? Like, oh, we got this guy running around. Same thing if it was a woman always running around. Oh, she's got to have somebody. He has to have somebody with him. And that's why people are filling in. Yeah, exactly. So that's why people are filling in with the Carol. And then even for a little while, one of the sisters, remember, look at the flowers. You know, that whole thing. Well, I, I still, I'm still, I'm still team Daryl and Connie here. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're definitely Daryl and Connie. That That has to be, hopefully part of the end game plan that Daryl and Connie. Agreed. You know. All right. So there you go. Rich, anything you want to say with this whole thing before we, we close off? Yeah, I want to say that I, I very much enjoyed the episode of the Haunted House vibe I approve of. And despite what Adam said, I'm actually a huge fan of Kevin Carroll, who played Virgil who was also the father in Snowfall and in another movie called Paid in Full. And Mm. this guy has a history of playing characters that you dislike, uh, that try to redeem themselves. So I'm glad that uh, he is trying to redeem himself. But obviously, yeah, he will not make it past the, (laughs) you know, the end of the season. I don't see that happening, but... uh, well, the we end of the see. season is the end of the series. The end of so. the series. There we, but you know yeah, what? Yeah. But, he, he, but you know what? Rich, you might be on to something because they've, they've already hinted that some of these cast members we will see survive or it's to go forward within some of the other spinoffs. Some may go into yeah. Fear. Some may go off. They, we already know there's two other spinoffs besides Fear, You know, not including World Beyond, which is ending this season. So, yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that he has to die here. So, I, I have another question, though. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's important to this or not. But it this what episode was this? Episode six, six sir. Six. Yeah. So we we estimate that episode eight is going to be the mid season finale. Yeah. Um, so that's two season finale. Yep. Yep. And then fear right, so, starts up. Right. The nuke. Um, so I. Yeah, so two more episodes left. We have the mid-season finale. Um, I'm I'm wondering because you 
Well, no, actually, is it going to be a mid-season finale? Because I I don't know if I remember correctly, but aren't they supposed to break twice for this yeah, season? Yeah, they're taking two breaks. Two breaks. Oh, so it's it's the it's the the the, the, the first, third the first they, 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 I, they might I don't yeah who knows what they they'll probably just take a break they'll be like all right and then just give a date and they'll say oh we'll see you in twenty twenty two you yeah. know that that type of deal. So now, yeah, the, uh, the spring and the fall of twenty twenty two. Right, right. So because I, I was thinking. You know, if this is the mid-season finale, then they have to show sort of the catalyst of what the, the end game is going to be. But I guess they don't have to show that this soon. They can wait for the other season finale, yeah. the, the the second mid-season finale. Yeah. Okay. I'm just makes I'm, sense. I'm just very curious to see because they, they they the showrunners said that they had special plans for all three of these shows to connect in some way via characters. And uh, the the obvious choice is the CRM because the CRM play a major role in all three. The CRM are the ones that picked up Rick and the main one. The CRM are the ones that saved the, some of the group from fear. And then CRM is also where the kids are at at the base and world beyond. So m- maybe Rick. This is how we get Rick and Michonne back. That the, it's that that's the connection because the CRM have the helicopters and it's all about fast travel at this point. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's another. Uh, I don't want to delve deep into this, but I I'm just wondering. You know, we're essentially going to get Rick and Michonne back for the before you know this series ends. Do do you guys expect to see what happens like Michonne actually finding Rick, or is, do you expect that to be in a movie? I don't expect any of that, only because Rich and I were let down recently when one of our favorite shows, which is Shameless, <laughs> came to an end, and everyone that was a fan of that show assumed Fiona was going to return. She had left two seasons before, and they're like, oh, she's definitely going to return, and she did not. She was a main character and did not return at Whoa. any point for that last season, and now it's just like, all right. There you go. You don't give a shit. You, this is not going to happen. So I can't assume that Rich, uh, that uh, that Rick and Michonne are going to show up. We would like them to show up, but I don't think. I don't know. Well, well, I just as 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 for my response to what you said, Carlos. Yes, mm-hmm. I do assume that's going to happen because they have planted the seeds. Even when you go back to last week, in the way they had that whole interaction with uh, the daughter, oh, you yes. know. And the talking way about her mom. But they said, oh, yeah, your mom abandoned you and all this other stuff. It's like they are building. They have to have a reunion with those characters. So I definitely expect to see Michonne and Rick back by before the season is over. I agree. <laughs> Damn, but, you know, but, but, Rich, that doesn't answer that doesn't answer my question. Do you, you said, think? Oh, God. No, yeah, yeah. You, you said, uh, do 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 do. Do I think they're gonna show Michonne looking for for Rick? Right, and actually like finding each other. Um, that is a possibility since Michonne's story ended with her going to try and find Rick. So it, yeah, I, I kind of feel like that they do need to have that payoff on you know on the actual show, but. Uh, and not in a movie or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, w- I wouldn't want to see it in a movie, but I th- the the issue is that it's hard to determine if that movie, when that movie is going to happen, and if it's going to come out before the show is over. Because I think it's multiple movies. Um, well, from what we've heard recently from uh, uh, the, the 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 lead of the whole project, they were still working on the script. Like they haven't even. I thought they finished filming, and that was in a recent. Oh. Uh, what's it? A, a gimbal, I think that's his name. And uh, they, he said, yeah, they haven't even started filming. And so, I don't so, know why I thought this was already in the bag, canned, and just waiting for theaters to fully reopen. And that was not the case. So, so, let, so let me just say this, and I, I know you know I don't know if, if AMC is going to listen to this podcast, but I, I don't really care if they listen. I want to make this comment: if well, they do listen they, or do something because they send us messages, so something's going. Yeah, on. yeah. So if if they save that moment 
for all that stuff that had to happen for Rick and Michonne for the movies, then I have to say that Gimple has done a horrible job as the person to bring this stuff together because th- all of this stuff, you should see it. When you introduce an idea on the TV show, the payoff should happen on the TV show. The whole thing with Michonne looking for Rick, we should get that in- on the show, not in a movie. So, so I'll be disappointed so if this they is it. This is a million dollar question. So you're predicting a happy ending to Walking Dead. Oh, I well, I didn't say that. Because <laughs> if we see I, I R- if we see Rick and Michonne and they reunite with Judith and uh, you know Rick Jr. over here, that's a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, I mean? no, because they can have a reunion and then right after that reunion, they all get killed. So that could still happen. But yeah, yes, it's they got yeah, to be some payoff. You know, I think I think the thing that triggers Michonne and Rick finding themselves back into Alexandria, it means that shits hit the fan in a in a in a big way, like in in not just in Alexandria, like that part, like in not uh, like in a regional way, where like a huge region of the I don't know, I guess they're all still in Georgia, right? Um, you know, something outside happens. Of, I think they're outside of Washington. Was it that the was it Washington? Okay, well, the southeast, yeah, so, yeah. something like that. Um, I think something like that should happen. But uh, um, I agree with Rick. Well, with Rick, with Rich, um, I think that they should resolve this. They should make. They should show Michonne finding Rick in the show. Having the only thing. The only thing here is after after this after this. Um, finale or this mid-season finale after the eighth episode there's only going to be 16 episodes left so Mm -hmm. we are going to have to not only you know do the the whole you know the whatever the end game is going to be but they also have to establish uh the michonne episodes i'm assuming michonne is going to be the the center point the center point of these episodes if they do show them and i don't think they can do them in in less than three episodes so mm-hmm. you know what I was thinking. I, this is a real stretch, but this 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 is definitely something they could uh, uh, use in the story. So remember, in fear at the last uh, for the last season and the last season, the nukes got deployed, right? And yep, they started the dropping. What if? Because we don't know fully the timeline if that's going along the same time as what's happening in Walking Dead now from the this main series. So what if everything toward the end of the season, everything looks like it's great and I'm like, oh yeah, we did it. Alexandra's fine. We got rid of Reapers and our Commonwealth is fine. Hey, what's that in the sky? And it's a nuke and it drops on them. <laughs> and that's the connection between fear and all of them. That one of the nukes actually went that far over and it dropped right there on their community and there we go game over that would be funny it could be i mean um i don't i don't know if if there is enough time to tie in fear with the walking dead proper i don't know if they even want to do that because um they only said certain characters they didn't say the whole story is going to carry over so i'm assuming that we're going to see some characters just like we saw with morgan and dwight they just did them wandering like they left the show and it's like all right we're gonna go he's looking for a wife and dwight is just i mean morgan is just looking for a new life so maybe we may see something like that or that's why i was saying with the crm with the fast travel because they have helicopters so it's mm-hmm. like, all right, listen, we need to go. Who wants to go back to this other one? I'll go, I'll go. And those characters now are on the other show because they <laughs> they got on the helicopter and they left. You know, so we'll see. But man, there you go. That was a little longer, people. That was a little deep dive of our thoughts of what's going on in the future as we uh, just get into this uh, final season. Yeah. So two more episodes before the midseason. So I'm expecting something big to happen. Or we'll, we're the first break, we shouldn't say midseason. All right, everybody, we will be back for the next episode for next week on episode seven. All right, everybody, peace. Peace out.